What's up, Yu-Gi-Oh! guys and gals? This is Dan the Old Man, Team 520. Um, we just got back from the UDS qualifier in Tucson over at Heroes and Villains Comics. Uh, we had a great time. It was fantastic. As you can see, I made top cut. Metal Fogo Yang Zings. After Swiss, I was 5-1 uh, in second place. Um, and then uh, wound up finishing in fifth place uh, after uh, losing top eight. Uh, Gary, he ran... Um, ABCs finished 13th, and Tyler ran Paleozoics, uh, finished 12th. There's the beautiful pin and, and lanyard. It's awesome. So I'm going to do a deck profile on the uh, Metaphor Yang Zings I ran. So we've got three Giatu. Uh, it's obvious why we run this at three. Uh, no explanation needed. It starts your plays. And please excuse the camera. Um, right now we don't have a stand I that is going to be fixed. Um, I promise you that. Uh, but right now I apologize. So forgive the camera movement. we got three Suwani. Three Zephyr New. Now, if there's anything that, that's a little different from anybody else's build, I will explain it. Um, it just with a lot of these cards, there's no reason to explain. Most of you guys know why we run these cards, anyways. Uh, we got two Chiwen, Light of the Yang Zang. Now, normally I would run this at three. Um, I put Painful Decision into the deck to test, see if it helps the deck, um, which it did. So I, I bumped this down to two. Uh, it seems to be all right. There was a few times I wished I had that third one in the deck, but most of the time it was it was just fine at two. Two bn. Two Bixie. One Pulau. Now on the uh, and that's it for the Yang Zings. Um, now for the metal foes, I run two of each. Uh, you'll see uh, people run a, a different variant, uh, usually equals eight metal foes. I've got eight metal foes, two one scales, two eight scales, or four, four one scales, four eight scales. Um, I just like two of each, so that's just my preference. Um, you can run, run them however you want. Metal foe gold driver. Two. Metal full silver, two. Two stealing. And two vol flame. Now I took the twin twisters out of the deck because I decided to put in eccentric archfiends. I did have three twin twisters. Um, to me, I thought eccentric archfiend was a little more versatile. Um, you can pop spells or traps, or you can pop monsters with it. So I, it, to me, it was a little more versatile, so I went with uh, Archfiend Eccentric. And two Maxi, and that's it for the monsters. Maxi, of course, you know, this deck wants to go first, but if they make you go second, Maxi is a good way to punish them for making you go second. Um, it's either they're going to, you know, only make a couple of summons, or they're going to take the Maxi Challenge and risk giving you a handful of cards. Now for the spells, we've got two painful decision. Um, this card actually, this is, uh, I added this card for this tournament um, just to see how how I liked it. It actually has really helped because there's a lot of times you're gonna open a handful of yang zings and you're going where the fuck are all my metal foes? Um, I didn't I didn't run into that. I didn't have that with this because um, you know you got the two uh, painful decisions, so it was it was really good. I really I really liked it. Two Yang Zing Path. Now in the old Yang Zing builds, three was mandatory this. Uh, two, it's just fine. Three, get a little cloggy. Um, I guess the argument could be made that it's it, it can be dump fodder for Giao Tu. Um, but with deck space being kind of tight in the deck, uh, two, it works just fine. Metal, Metal Foes Fusion. One, really good effect. Of course, right, Geki. Board wipe. Gain your opponent makes you go second. Um... 
against the the last metal foe matchup I had today um, in the top eight. It was uh, Raigeki was kind of useless. He put a, a board out there with a raccoon, a Kieran, and a Cyber Dragon Infinity, and that was game one. It came down to the die roll. I lost because of the die roll. Um, he won the die roll, went first, put out a Kieran, a raccoon, and a, and a Cyber Dragon Infinity. Um, that's kind of a hard board to get over. Game two, I went into uh, number 38, a Void Ogre. With the nine pillars and a Zephyr Divine Strike set. Um, so he scooped. That was a hard board to get over for negations. He couldn't get over it. And then game three, he went back to the exact same board. Um, and of course, I couldn't, you know, there was, couldn't draw any of the side deck or, uh, cards. Uh, so it was a, it was a lose again um, when they put Kieran out there. That's the only board I've ever seen make Raigeki worthless, <laughs> to be 100% honest with you. Now for the traps. Three nine pillars of the Yang Zings. Obvious, it's our it's our solemn judgment. Two metal foe combination. Um, don't run it at three anymore. Just don't need it, and space is tight. One vanity's emptiness. As you can you know as as you can imagine you know if you go into vanity's emptiness. You go first. Put out a, a really good board, back it up with Vanity's Emptiness, uh, your opponent has a really bad day. And this one's one that most people aren't running anymore, um, but I, I found I, I really like it. I put it back in, I found I really like it. Zephyr Divine Strike. Um, again, it ba does basically the same thing as um, Nine Pillars, except it destroys, it doesn't shuffle it back into the deck. Um, and you banish a face-up Zephyr monster from your extra deck in order to do it. And the reason I'm doing that is because Nine Pillars is great, but there's a lot of times where I'm searching for multiple of either Nine Pillars or Zephyr Divine Strike, and the only Yang Zing you've got on board is your Baxia or or something like that. And so Nine so Nine Pillars, especially if it's a, if it's a Baxia, the Baxia doesn't float. So if I've got something like that out on board, Zephyr Divine Strike, I can actually use Zephyr Divine Strike um, with a uh, Zephyr in my extra deck. So to me, it just was it, it, it was a really good one. Now for the extra deck. Three Baxia, of course. I don't know of anybody who doesn't run three Baxia. I actually picked up the other two ultimate rares. My favorite rarity. I had one ultimate rare, two secrets. It was killing me. So I picked up the other two ultimate rares. But Baxia, you know, field wipe and then the pop combination to, to go for other, other plays. Two Daddy Danglong. Danglong, great card. Three effects. Um, when he first comes out, you search for a Yang Zing Speller Trap. Then you dump a Yang Zing from the deck to the grave. He becomes that level. He's a tuner. Um, and then when he leaves the field, you special summon a Yang Zing monster from the deck. So he got just a really, really good card. Anytime you've got three effects on one card, that's really, really nice. Yazi, really, un really, uh, until here recently, this has been a really underused card for me. Something that I didn't make enough. I'm actually thinking about experimenting of a build, uh, of a, of a deck build with, uh, Mari Mari in it, uh, because, Yazi's effect bring Mari Mari out and continue to go into some other foolishness. So let you know how that goes. Um, but it, you know, I got the idea. So I'm gonna try it out. Not saying it's gonna go anywhere, but Yazi, he's such a great card. He really is. Um, Chow Fang. Um, this actually slowed down the ABCs. Uh, my my matchups today were I beat Shadal Artifacts. Uh, I beat ABCs. I beat Paleozoics. And I beat a pure metal foe build, and then I lost to two pure metal foe builds. So, I mean, all in all, I, I, all the meta decks I went toe to toe with, and this this slows down both ABCs. And um, if you're playing blue eyes, blue eyes can't play when you bring this out um, with a uh, with light materials on it. So it's it's really nice. Uh, it's a really good card. You go into it when you need it. Void Ogre Dragon. Um, this card's great as long as you've got no cards in hand. You can negate spell cards. Um, again, this is part of the board that, that won me game two in that, in that top eight. Um, you put this with a whole harbinger and a couple of, ba and a couple of back row and, uh, your opponent's not playing much. 
Hope Harbinger. I, what, what do I need to say? It's just a fantastic card. Trishula. Everybody knows what Trishula does. This actually uh, did real well for me today. I actually, the Paley's Oak player, I trishula him. And uh, took one of his uh, Ronin Toadens, uh, took his Ronin Toaden out of the graveyard, so he wasn't able to uh, double toad me that one, and that actually helped win me the game because he would have been able to go double uh, totally awesome. Herald of Arc Light didn't really make this today, didn't really have the situations where I needed to make it. Uh, my favorite times to go in this are during my opponent's turn when they start to go and make their plays, use a Chi Win and a Suwani. And you go into Herald of the Arc Light, and then everything that they send to the graveyard is going to be banished instead. So, really, really a good card, really an underrated card. Or I'm sorry, not a Chi Win and a Suwani, a uh, 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 Chi Win and a BN. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ignister, again, non targeting removal. Um, stuff that, you know, that, that occasional stuff that can't be targeted. Mithrilium floats, gets rid of problem cards. I like it. Now here's a, here's a couple of interesting cards. Uh, Nirvana High Paladin. I recently, in the last couple of, in about the last month, started running this card. Love it. Absolutely love it. You can use pendulums for for uh, you can you can use pendulums for tuners in this, and you hit your opponent with it. Uh, if you destroy a monster, you ha and not only do they take the damage. But you half their life points. This card is just amazing. I love this card, Nirvana High Paladin. If you're not running it, you definitely should. Now, this card's one that I just added to the deck. Um, I actually credit Gary for this one. Gary built a Crystron deck and discovered this card and told me, hey, this card's great. I read it, and I says, I totally agree. Uh, Paleozoics. Hate this card. Crystron Phoenix. Uh, now, if you guys don't know what this card does, let me read its text. It's uh, one tuner monster, one tuner synchro monster, one or more non-tuner synchro monsters. If this card is synchro summoned, you can banish all spell and trap cards your opponent controls and in their graveyard. If this synchro summoned card is destroyed by battle or card effects, you can target one mon other monster in your graveyard, special summon it. So, funny story about this card. First tournament I ran this card in. Okay, I bring it out. Banish all of his spells and traps from his field and his and his graveyard. Okay, they'd already gotten rid of a Nirvana High Paladin, so it was in the graveyard. I used a metal foe, one of my metal foe uh, scale effects. Pop him. He went to the, his effect kicks, brings back out Nirvana High Paladin. I mean, the guy, I, the guy scooped. He was he was pissed. He was salty. Um. Chris John Phoenix, this card is just fantastic. I love this card. I'm glad that Gary Gary gave me the idea to run this card. Um, and I think that you guys, if you guys aren't running it, if you guys haven't discovered it, I really, really recommend this card. It's it's great. It won me against Paleozoics today. It helped win me against Paleozoics today. <coughs> All right, guys. Well, that's the uh, that's the deck list. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like. Um, and subscribe if you would please like comment and subscribe if you've got any ideas for the deck please let me know if you don't have any ideas for the deck please let me know that too if you don't like the deck feel free to say it in the in the comics um i've got thick skin let's just try to keep it you know on on a we're all we're all most of us are all fucking adults you know so there's no need to get nasty but you know just let me know what you think like comment subscribe thanks uh team 520 out